Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for its and gold fundamental and technical analysis. Um, I wish you all a very happy 2023 and I hope you had a good 2022 and uh, for 2023 hopefully my videos uh, will help you to turn a corner if you haven't uh, already with your trading and if you are um, doing well um, due to watching these uh, videos uh, long may it continue so um, let's get into the week ahead and um, trading economics is the one of my go-to sites and um, if you're looking for you know the analysis as far as the week ahead typically they release it on a uh, on a Sunday and um, what well, they released it on a Saturday 28 hours ago I'm recording this on Sunday and so just click on the week ahead and it will take you to here and zooming in, uh, looking at the week ahead, it says in the US, uh, center stage will be taken by the inflation rate report, uh, Fed Chair Powell's speech at the Ricks Bank International Symp uh, Symposium and the University of Michigan's Consumer Sentiment. Also, CPI data will be released for China, India, Mexico and Brazil. Finally, investors will pay would pay attention uh, to foreign trade for China, Australia, Euro area and the UK and November GDP uh, growth figures for the uk and the monetary policy meeting in south korea so a few things going on um in the week ahead upcoming to be aware of uh the most in, i think the most eyeballs are going to be on really um the uh, cpi and we'll get into that as we uh, as we uh, go on to the charts anyways uh Starting on the charts, DXY, which is the dollar index, measure of dollar strength against various currencies and starting off 2023. So uh, we've got some demand here. And uh, let's look to probably just uh, draw some demand all the way down here, right? So down into this demand zone, we've touched this level once, twice already. Um, technically, um, when you get a level that's been touched several times, it no longer really becomes a bargain um, and it could look for, you know, a next move down. I am actually still uh, bullish on the dollar um, for at least the next uh, quarter, um, as are several banks. But before I get into that, um, the... Uh, Fed got some uh, decent news. Fed gets Goldilocks in jobs report, slower wage growth and solid hiring. Uh, unemployment rate at 3.5%, cooling wage growth in December. Jobs report seems like Goldilocks print, Bloomberg economist says. So hopes that the Federal Reserve can tame inflation without uh, zooming in widespread widespread job losses mounted Friday after a government report showed robust hiring and a historically low unemployment rate paired with a cooling in wage growth, which is actually, um, you know, what the Fed actually uh, want. Um, so uh, in some respects, the December uh, jobs report offered the best case scenario for the Fed Americans keeping their jobs, but inflationary pressures of easing of earnings, sorry, are easing, giving policymakers room to slow the pace of interest rate hikes. Most economists anticipate Fed's aggressive tightening to push the economy into recession in the next year and for unemployment to rise to some degree. Um, by the way, there is a correlation between um, unemployment and inflation. And in fact, when inflation, uh, I can't remember what the um, the study was called, but um, basically uh, there was a study that showed historically um, doesn't work, you know, it's not all the time correlated 100%, but um, unemployment tends to be correlated with um, inflation, meaning that they work inversely. And in, when unemployment goes up, inflation goes down. And as in um, um unemployment goes down inflation goes up so as in unemployment actually uh, rises or when it does start to rise in fact that should help inflation to come down uh, last month's trends if sustained for several months mitigate the chances or yeah chances of an economic downturn at least for now and that makes all the sense in the world if inflation is coming down it's not that the fed wants fewer jobs what they want is lower wage growth yeah so lower wage growth meaning um they want lower inflation more because they're worried about persistent inflation of course randall uh, krosner a former fed governor 
and now an economist professor at the University of Chicago Booth School of Business said on Bloomberg. And you can start to see that the Fed uh, officials raised interest rates by 50 basis points in December, bringing them to the highest level since 2007. They moderated their pace after four straight 75 basis point moves, but signaled they are not only uh, they not only expect to keep hiking in 2023, but also keep rates elevated for some time. And again, that's more dependent upon uh, CPI, right? And so CPI will help determine the size of the next rate hike. And this is the eco week ahead. So consumer prices, they are uh, due in week of global inflation releases. And um, I really, you know, highly recommend that you guys uh, do check out my uh, YouTube channel. I do have a, a couple of webinars. Matter of fact, if you go to the to the uh, YouTube site, I have a webinar. Right. If you type in, if you if you watch these two webinars, fundamental analysis webinar, three steps to generate a profitable trade ideas and how to forecast uh, huge trends using forex fundamental analysis, um, you will uh, really kind of understand the, the 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 fundamentals and the relationship as to how inflation, interest rates, and GDP, you know, work. And then once you understand that, reading these articles becomes you know a lot easier and it makes a lot more sense, right? Anyways, inflation data in the coming week are expected to stay consistent with a gradual step down in cost pressures and will help determine the size of the Federal Reserve's next interest rate increase. So the consumer price index excludes, um, excluding, sorry, food and energy known as core CPI, right? So the CPI and its core CPI, core CPI excludes food and energy uh, and seen as better underlying indicator then the headline measure is projected to have risen 0.3% in December. And central banks typically tend to keep an eye more on the core CPI um, than the headline figure. But while slightly more than November, the monthly advance would be in line with the average for the quarter and well below the 0.5% average seen from January through September amid the highest inflation in a generation. So um, it's expected to come in at 0.3. If it comes in a bit higher, then pretty much the Fed will be on track to um, to you know, hike by 50 basis points. If it comes in, you know, lower, then it will put put it all cards off the table in terms of the Fed hiking by 50 basis points. They're probably going to hike by 25 basis points, which means actually, in fact, the dollar in the short term going um, going lower because that has to be priced in to the market, right? So we take our, you know, guidance from fundamental analysis and value because ultimately that's what fundamental analysis is determining you know exchange rate value and so um, nobody knows where it's going to go right but you know you have a game plan for where you know if data does come out and you understand how um, exchange rates are valued and the currency is valued um, then you can say all right then well if it comes out you really know lower than expected way lower than expected then probably the dollar is likely to sell off but i do think um that the dollar is still a buy even at the 102s um one of the things that does help uh, the dollar to be a buy is seasonality not something i typically look into um a lot or um you know when it comes to currencies i'm more um again driven by you know what's going on from the fundamental perspective but to add some confluence um if you're looking back right at the euro dollar performance since the euro launched in 1999 um in the first eight weeks of the year uh the dollar typically strengthens so this is the euro dollar chart you know euro dollar going down means the dollar is strengthening um we did see uh the last uh five weeks of the year the euro uh, uh actually gain and appreciate Right. We saw that. In fact, we saw that uh, probably the last five weeks, maybe must have been the last maybe um, maybe eight weeks, maybe about two months into uh, maybe from November, December. You know, we had a seasonality, um, you know, come true. So uh, from a seasonality perspective, um, you know, if you're long dollars, then you've got at least some statistics on your side. Um, is this the year that it breaks that, you know, that that usual uh, pattern? Uh, it could be right again. Nobody knows 100 percent. But um, from a, um, a Fed, um, you know, hiking rates and thinking that the uh, inflation is still, you know, a bit persistent. Um, 
you know, if they're looking to hike, then I do think 50 basis points inflation comes out a bit higher than expected core inflation. then I do think that the dollar is a buy. So again, um, you know, it just depends on which way it goes. Nobody knows for sure. That's why you manage your risk and see where, you know, prices go and um, and see where the data takes us. Anyways, but my, my, my bias is still to buy uh, dollars. And so I'm looking at any pullbacks into the 103s, 102 areas as potential buying opportunities. Moving on to the dollar yen and the dollar yen. Um, I'm actually a buyer of the yen looking for an opportunity to get short on this yen um, as the yen. Um, I mentioned it last year, probably the last year's video. Last one I did was the yield curve control. They changed their yield curve control or adjusted it, which basically means that the market is um, thinking that there's a potential for the central bank policy change. And so what you're likely to see is, in fact, um, you know, lower um, uh, dollar uh, and and more of a, an expensive yen. Now, again, I'm not saying that's going to happen this week. It could pull back. And the better the pullback, the better the price to get in for a short. Um, am I buying the dollar against the, sorry, buying the yen against the dollar? Nope, not really. I'm buying really the yen against, you know, my, one of my top trades for the year is going to be the yen against the, uh, the pound. And so um, I do actually, again, going back to my YouTube channel, for anyone who is, you know, interested, if you scroll down on the main page, I actually have um, this video or two videos here, which talk about, well, you know, the Bank of Japan caused a thousand pit move uh, on the yen and uh, also our, our bank shorting the pound in 2023. And if you watch these two, you'll understand why I'm, you know, bearish on the pound and bullish on the yen from a fundamental analysis perspective and so um i do drop some gems in here this is usually reserved for the uh for the private members group but i thought i'd release um some of these uh, trade ideas uh to the public and uh this video's only got 110 views uh crazy and for over five days just goes to show you uh Sometimes that, um, you know, great information, um, people would rather uh, get get um, blinded by just the technical analysis side of things when really it's the fundamentals that that, that will drive, um, you know, the technicals. Anyways, getting back to uh, uh, the uh, technicals here. And so for me, um, if I am, I'm not necessarily trading this currency pair, but if I was really your options, uh, are going to be uh, looking for supply zones. Oh, sorry, not that one. Supply zones um, as a pullback into this area to look for uh, short trades. If you are looking for long dollar, um, again, if I'm buying the dollar, I wouldn't buy it against Japanese yen. I want to delete this one here because it touched the uh, zone before uh, beneath it. And, um, and so the next really drop down to buy the dollar if you haven't already is going to be down at the one two sevens. In fact, there are forecasts for the uh, for the dollar yen to actually reach one um, twenties. Hence, the title for the um, for the YouTube video. Right? Will the Bank of Japan cause a thousand pip move? Because if that is correct, yeah, if that is correct, and we're at what one the one three twos at the moment, yeah then you're going to have over a thousand pip move to the downside right so um not necessarily a clickbaity title this is actually um you know looking actually at what potentially could happen so uh with that being said um any pullbacks i think are decent buying opportunities for the yen um, and if the uh, inflation comes out you know stronger than expected then there is a buying opportunity if prices do come down to the 130 round number Moving on to uh, dollar Swiss, dollar Swiss. Zooming out, let's get a bit more uh, zones drawn from a demand perspective. So we've got at least all this area here as uh, an area of demand, and we've also got just a lower zone right here from back in August 2021. And so um, I'm actually a buyer of the Swiss franc, but not again, not against the uh, dollar. But um, dollar Swiss not really interested in 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 this pair, in trading this pair. But if you are, then really your zones, your the zones you're looking for, uh, depending on whether you're long or short, are going to be pretty much um, 
where we are now. If you're looking for short trades, probably a bit higher into any of these zones, the 95, 50s, 95 round numbers, and then you're looking at any short trades. If you're looking for long trades, then this would have been the best area to look for longs. First touches of, of uh, zones are usually the, the best, um, but if you are looking for a trade, maybe might have to wait for you know a bit of a deeper pullback but um i'm steering clear of this uh, currency pair uh dollar cad again we could see some um some uh dollar selling depending on the, obviously the week and what happens with uh, cpi um the canadian dollar um not doing so well due to commodity uh prices at the moment but there is a trade idea in uh, China reopening and so if China reopens uh, successfully um, and gets their COVID um, uh, uh, infections uh, down um, then and they start to really kind of grow from a GDP perspective in fact commodity currencies you know could actually do really well um, so again where are we from a buying or selling perspective I would say um, a decent buy if you're looking at the dollar from here but a fresher zone down to the one three twos is probably the, the better zone to look for any kind of buy trades for the US dollar for the Canadian dollar you're definitely looking at a fresher area of supply before looking at getting short I would say definitely above this area here this one three sevens before looking at getting um, uh, long on the Canadian dollar uh, moving towards the New Zealand dollar US dollar and again New Zealand dollar um, uh, will benefit from China reopening and so if or even some dollar weakness um, you probably will see maybe prices go to the upside so the dollar is pretty much going to be a sell across the board if CPI comes in as weak at least in the short term um, you know because of the value has to the the value of the dollar has to be readjusted so um, you know we could see a buy uh, right now um, I would probably more buy the New Zealand dollar based off of um, China reopening and positive reopening as well which uh, again the analysts are pretty much saying it might be the, the towards the second quarter of the year and so any pullbacks into demand zones decent buying opportunities even low would be better it's a bargain price um, and then any you know short trades looking to buy the US dollar um, would be decent um, around the uh, 65 to 66 area uh, pound dollar pound dollar um, my bias is for a short um, on this regardless of how uh, you know the uh, the US and the Federal Reserve um, may be easing up on um, interest rate hikes I do think that the um, the UK is in a worse position. Uh, Sunak's, uh, he's our Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, Sunak's growth strategy missing as former bank, says, sorry, former bank economist. So Rishi Sunak is still missing a plan to boost the economy. A former Bank of England chief economist has warned as the UK is forecast for a recession. And the, one of the things you have to be obviously aware of is the fact that um, you know who which country is going into a recession first right because that is going to hinder um, their the currency upside potential so Andy Haldane uh, said on Sunday there is not really a growth program at all all right as Prime Minister defended the scale of his ambition to bring inflation down um, and so uh, yeah he, he, you know Rishi Sunak has given it all the talk but if he hasn't got a plan um, then ultimately uh, you know He's not going to save the economy, right? Uh, look what happened to Liz Truss when she had a plan, or she said that she had a plan, but when he analysed it, the bond market didn't like it, right? And and the, and the pound plunged. And so if um, Rishi Sunak, you know, gets found out in terms of, you know, it's all just lip service, but ha actually hasn't got anything in place, then um, you can expect the same to happen to the pound. And so for me, you know, I think any pullbacks to any supply zones is my bias, so any moves up, especially up top there, I think that's nice. And then you have got a decent zone right there as well. So any pullbacks into the 122s and especially the 124s, I think are going to be really nice uh, buyers for the dollar. If you are looking at getting long on the pound against the dollar, maybe in the short term, then you do have a bit of a demand zone there, which it kind of uh, broke through slightly. So I'll probably just use this demand zone here. 
and you've got another one uh, down at the 115s to yeah 111 is quite a wide demand zone there but um but yeah that's really where you're looking at if you're looking at buying euro dollar so euro dollar it wouldn't surprise me if prices you know went a bit higher um we've been seeing in fact in the group that some of the uh, some bank targets you know can uh, arranging um an auctioning uh, they think that maybe the 110s could actually be met um, at some point. Again, it depends on um, you know what happens in Europe and also with uh, with the Fed and um, and inflation. And so um, I think again, my bias is still to the short side. So any pullbacks are, for me of buying opportunities for the dollar, depending on obviously you know um, CPI as well um, and how bad or actually how good it is. Right, I'm actually short in this trade already. Got in short from up here. And so uh, it's a profitable trade, took some profit off. And so I've got um, a position or two still uh, remaining on here with my stops moved um, down a bit. So I'm, you know, I'm doing OK. Let's see what happens, though. And um, yeah, if you are looking to buy the um, the euro, you've got demand zone there, which it has, you know, reacted from. And again, I, it wouldn't surprise me if prices did, you know, come up to this fresher area, the 108s. But for me, again, I think that's a, a shorting opportunity. I don't think the uh, Europe is a is a bunch of roses at all, uh, not at all, regardless of, you know, what the, um, uh, you know, the the at the analysis. I want to get that word out is on the um, on the dollar. Um, you're always comparing. You know the dog with the least fleas. Uh, Australian dollar, I think, is going to be a great buy if this China, um, and it already might be right, but I still think it ha will have a lot of legs to go if China reopen successfully. Um, so if you start to see prices pull back to an area, and um, but the, the the Chinese risk, you know, risk on sentiment is is prevalent, then I think any moves back down to that 66, 67 area. Think is really nice. Even better would be you know 61, 62s. But um, again, just like every other chart against the dollar, you know you've got an area here, 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 which has been touched several times. So I probably might expect technically prices to kind of break above that. But that could be a decent shorting opportunity around the you know 70 cent area. Um, again, not really a pair that I'm looking to trade just yet. Um, although it could be something in the future. Uh, Aussie yen, uh, again, my bias for now, I think is definitely to the short side. So any moves to the uh, to the upside, especially if, uh, you know, risk off, you know, global growth, China start to stall with their uh, with their GDP, then I think this is going to be a really nice uh, sell. Uh, this 95, uh, 42s, if prices can just come up there slightly and then look for any kind of sell trades. Um, again, yield curve control, the, the uh, central bank, the RBA, um, are really kind of, you know, reducing rates, just like all central banks, right? So it's not just the Fed that are reducing rates. It's the Canadian, you know, Bank of Canada, the RBA, um, you know, the, uh, there's a lot of other banks that are reducing their hiking. And so you've got also a, a central bank in, in the Bank of Japan that could be actually hiking rates. So there's a convergence trade right there. Anyways, um, if you are looking to buy, then really the area to look for any kind of buys is going to be down at the, um, what's that, the 88s. So that's demand there. And then we've got uh, some demand uh, here, 85, 50s, 84. Um, would be where I'd probably look to target for any kind of profit taking if I can get in a decent short. But again, some conflicting information depends on how uh, China reopen. And finally, gold, right? I've been, I was saying this for a while. The central banks are looking, were buying gold. And as prices were going down, yeah, what they were doing was just accumulating. Accumulating, 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 right? And this is evidence of it. You can see it, you know, to the upside. Uh, China. Um, extends gold buying with fresh flows to central banks. China reported an increase in its gold reserves for a second straight month, topping up holdings against again after the, its first reported purchase in more than three years. So that should tell you everything you need to know, right? Um, you know, looking, I was looking, I was buying gold down at the uh, 
1640. He's not trading it, you know, just buying it. Um, and so, um, yeah, this is basically what's what's happening uh, with you know the dollar potentially weakening into you know the the the, the, the third or the second half of the year as they you know start to hold rates. Um, inflation is coming down, but potential recession talk, global recession talk. Um, again, if China don't get their act together, but could see gold look to uh, strengthen. And of course, you know, with China buying gold, these central bankers are uh, are a clever bunch, and so. Um, you know, it's always good to, you know, ride their coattails. So if you do want to get long on the dollar, really you're looking for, I'm sorry, long on gold, you're looking for really any kind of pullbacks into any of these zones, these demand zones. You do have some supply right here. Yeah, I have to kind of put it all up here. Um, supply right there. Um, but personally, my bias, although I'm long dollars, you know, I can be long gold at the same time. Um, and I do think that long gold um, on, on a pullback is, you know, is, is decent. And again, I'm not necessarily trading this more, um, more of an investment strategy. So uh, let's see what happens with that. Um, all right, guys, that's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed the analysis and I uh, hope you have a great trading week and take care.